Now that we know the definition of derivative and we know that finding a derivative means to differentiate, we can talk about differentiability of a function both at a point or on an open interval. A function f is differentiable at a if f prime of a exists. So basically if the derivative exists at a point, it is differentiable there. If we're looking at an open interval and it can be a bounded interval or it could be unbounded above, below, or both, it is differentiable on an open interval if it is differentiable at every number in the interval. So let's look at the absolute value function and determine where it's differentiable. So we know that differentiable means the derivative exists. So let's look here, put point p at x equals 0 and let's look at q1. If we look at the slope of the secant line that joins these points, we get m equals 1. We know that the derivative is the limit as h approaches 0 of the difference quotient, which is the slope of the secant line. So as we let h become smaller and smaller and smaller, you can see as we approach from the right hand side that the limit of these slopes of secant lines equals 1. However, if we looked on the left hand side, and we computed the slope of this line, we would get m equals negative 1. And as we move closer and closer and closer to p, so we take the limit as h approaches 0 of the slopes of these secant lines from the left hand side, we see that we have this limit equaling negative 1. Therefore, the left hand limit does not equal the right hand limit, and therefore the limit does not exist at x equals 0, approaching 0 of the difference quotient. Therefore, the derivative does not exist at x equals 0, and so this function is not differentiable at x equals 0. You can see if we picked any other point that if I computed the slopes of the secant lines from the right hand side or the left hand side of this particular point p1, they would both be equal to 1 and as I let h approach 0 they equal 1. Similarly if I picked a point over here and I approached from the left hand side or the right hand side the limit as h approaches 0 the different quotient would equal negative 1 the left hand limit would equal the right hand limit and therefore that would be the limit and so the derivative would exist exist there. So this function is differentiable everywhere except at x equals 0. Now let's look at a theorem that says if f is differentiable at a, then f is continuous at a. And we're going to prove this theorem that differentiable implies continuous. So what we want to do is we want to say if we know that f prime of a exists, so the derivative exists, so it's differentiable at a, then we want to show that it is continuous at a. So by definition of continuity, we would want to show that the limit as x approaches a of f of x would equal the function value at a because this is our definition of continuity. We're going to start by looking at f of x minus f of a. You'll see why in just a minute. So I could take this and I could multiply this by x minus a and I could also divide this by x minus a provided x did not equal a. Now if x did not equal a then basically I am multiplying and dividing by the same thing x minus a over x minus a so that is equivalent to multiplying by 1. So that would be true as long as x did not equal a. Now the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to add f of a to both sides of this and so I would have f of x equals f of x minus f of a over x minus a multiplied by x minus a plus f of a. Now I'm going to take the limit as x approaches a of both sides and maybe now you can see why I might have been doing this. We can see that this left hand side equals the left hand side of this statement I'm trying to prove because that would show continuity at a. Now looking at the right hand side I have the limit of a product and a sum. So I can use limit laws. We know that the limit of a product is the product of the limits and we know the limit of a sum is the sum of the limits. So I could express this as the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a 
over x minus a multiplied by the limit as x approaches a of x minus a plus the limit as x approaches a of f of a. Now looking at this let's start actually right here and I can use actually direct substitution to evaluate this limit and as x approaches a I would have a minus a which is 0. Put it down here 0. So 0 times a finite number would be 0. I need to determine now if this is a finite number but in looking at this this is just the definition of the derivative at a. So I have the derivative of a times 0 here and I know that's a finite number because I know this derivative exists. So I have f prime of a times 0 which would equal 0 plus here I have the limit as x approaches a of f of a. f of a is just a constant so as x approaches a this is always f of a regardless what the x is. So this left hand side was the limit as x approaches a of f of x and that equals the derivative times 0 which is just 0 so that equals f of a. So I have now proven that if I know f is differentiable at a then I know it is continuous at a. Now sort of an alternate version of the theorem or something I could determine then is that if f is not continuous at a I know it is not differentiable because if it was differentiable differentiability implies continuity and so if it is not continuous it must not have been differentiable. Now a caution, students sometimes misuse this theorem and think it implies something it does not. It does not imply differentiability if I know a function is continuous at a. Okay, differentiability implied continuity but I can't turn it around and here's a good example why. We just showed that this particular function, the absolute value function was not differentiable at x equals 0 yet it is continuous there because the function value exists there and the limit as x approaches 0 of the absolute value from the left and the right both equals 0. Therefore the limit as x approaches 0 of the absolute value function equals the function value at x equals 0. So it is continuous there but we already showed that the slopes of the secant lines as we let h approach 0 from the left and the right did not agree so it was not differentiable there. So when does a function not have a derivative at a point? Well if we had a corner and you can see that as we approached p from the left side or the right side looking at the slopes of the secant lines that they would not agree therefore the limit as h approaches 0 the difference quotient would not exist at p and the derivative would not exist so not differentiable at a corner. If we looked at this, this is called a cusp and as we looked at the slopes of the secant lines as we approach p from the left or the right we are getting an undefined slope so the derivative does not exist at a cusp. Looking at point p here as we look at the slopes of the secant lines as we approach p from the left or the right we see that we are getting a vertical line whose slope is undefined and so the derivative does not exist at a vertical tangent. As we already said not continuous means not differentiable and you can see why here. Here is a jump discontinuity and as we look at the slopes of the secant lines from the left versus the right they do not agree therefore the limit as h approaches 0 at point p does not exist for the difference quotient and therefore the derivative does not exist there. Here's another example of a discontinuity where the function is defined up here at p and you can see that they are approaching an undefined slope. The derivative does not exist at p. So at a point of discontinuity the derivative does not exist. So here is a summary of when a function is not differentiable at a point. If at least one of these holds it's not going to be differentiable there. If it's not continuous at a if it has a corner or a cusp at A or if it has a vertical a tangent at A in any of these situations the derivative would not exist at A. It is not differentiable at that point.